take a few minutes this morning to talk to you about the essentials of fly casting. Now bear in mind, I typically do a one hour presentation of the, the five essentials. Five, we're going to condense that into about a five to ten minute video. So we're not going to cover all of the aspects, but we'll give you a good general knowledge of what you, what you expect. The five essentials, uh, if you want to go into a lot of detail with them, check out Bill Gamble's video on the five essentials. It's an excellent video. Uh, in summary of the, those five essentials, because we simply don't have the time and video to cover everything, we're going to break them down into steps one, two, three, four, and five. The first essential I'd like to talk to you about is slack. The removal and importance of removing slack. The cast, if you're trying to start a cast with slack on the water, that cast is very likely not to go anywhere. It's very important that you remove slack. Sometimes it's simply this much slack on the water. Take your line hand and pull it back and remove it till you get the line relatively straight. Then you can do a nice pickup and lay down. So anytime that you have slack to any degree, remove that slack first. Now slack doesn't always occur when you have the line laying down in the water. Sometimes that slack occurs while you're casting because of the way that you're casting. So you want to take advantage of everything that you know to eliminate slack while you're casting. For example, when you're false casting, I talked a little bit about in an earlier video about the slack produced in false casting when you're casting too, your pause is too long. Right. So remove the slack at any point during your casting. The next thing I'd like to talk to you about is arc and stroke length. Now, let me define what arc is. Arc is the angle that's created from one stop to the next. So on your back cast, wherever you stop the rod tip, that's your first ray of your arc. Wherever you stop the cast on your forward cast, that's the second ray creating an angle or an arc. The principle here, or the essential here, is that for every amount of line that you have, there is an appropriate arc that, that you should be casting in. Let me define one other term for you, and that's stroke length. Stroke length is the amount of forward or backward motion that you do with the rod at the, at the reel. It could be six inches, it could be three feet. Again, with any amount of line that you have out, there is an appropriate stroke length that needs to happen in order to make the appropriate loop. So arc and stroke length are generally talked about at the same time, but they are two different, different terms altogether. Arc has a much more of an effect on the loop shape, so it's, it's very important that you keep arc in, in mind when you're casting. If I have a short amount of line out, then my arc may only be 15, 20 degrees. But if I have a larger amount of line out, in this case, I've got about 45 feet of line out, my arc is more like 90 degrees. So the length of line determines the, the width of the arc. It also determines the stroke length. You notice you probably picked up that with that short cast, my stroke length was virtually nil. There is no, or virtually maybe an inch or two movement of the reel back and forth. But when I had the, all that line out, now with 40 feet of line out, my stroke length is about a foot. So for a specific amount of line that I have out, I need a specific amount of stroke length. The next feature that are essential that I'd like to talk to you about is your pause. Your pause, if you pause appropriately, you make nice loops. So I'm going to pause here for a second, let that line go out straight, and I'm producing some nice loops. Now if my pause is too long, those loops fall out of the sky and I don't have a nice loop at all anymore. In fact, I don't have any loop at all. If I pause 
too little, then I, I hear the crack. The next thing I'd like to talk to you about is a smooth acceleration to a stop. When you make a cast, you want to make sure that you've got a smooth acceleration of that line to that, of the rod tip to a stop. If you have an inappropriate acceleration of that rod tip to a stop, you're going to create what's called a tailing loop. Now, tailing loops in themselves require a lot more discussion. So check out my other video where I go into detail about tailing loops, and you, you'll see a lot more information there. But tailing loops are generally affect your accuracy and your distance, so they're typically bad. They're not bad 100% of the time, but they're typically bad. They also put knots in your fly line, so be careful.